Well, one example might be, let's say that we have this brush. Let me just kind of make this guy slightly more interesting. So I got this brush for my fill background. It's doing something. I'm thinking, geez, that is a pretty sweet brush. I want to use that same brush in multiple places. Well, the last thing you want to do is copy and paste that markup because now if you want the brush to look like this, you got to change it in 20 different places. So on the brush editor, we have a really simple way to convert a brush into a resource. Plus brush. See that button right there? If I click it, Blend now says, OK, great. Uh, where do you want me to put this thing? And what do you want me to call it? So I will call it my way cool brush. That's just going to define your key. Now here's where I can pick uh, which scope I want it to be at. I could put it directly in the window, right? So if I if I pick the window, that would mean anything within this window has access to this brush. If I wanted to, I could embed it in the path, which is not going to be terribly helpful here. But it could be helpful if you wanted to maybe embed a resource in a stack panel that contained other layout managers, right? Then everything in that master stack panel would get that brush. But probably more common, you might want to put it in the application. And that will just update your app-derived class, right? Your application-derived class to uh, have a resource container. And that way, every window in your project can get at it. And if you want to get even a little more modular, you could make a brand new resource dictionary. And that would just be an external XAML file. So I can say, for example, all my brushes.xaml. And that will add it into your project. Now, the great thing about doing this with Blend is it will automatically merge the resource dictionary. So let's check out what just happened, okay? First of all, if I were to go back and look at the markup for my path, okay? Um, notice that when I put this guy together, right? My fill, which should be way down here, he's now using my resource by name. So he's no longer having the hard-coded gradient brush is referring to my way cool brush resource. And where did that end up? Well, we put it inside of a brand new XAML file, right? So this was just added to my project. If I double click to open it in Blend, it's just basically saying you can't design with this, but I can see the markup, right? So there's my resource dictionary. There's my way cool brush. And if I were to look in my application XAML, it merged my dictionary for me, which is great, right? So now all the things inside of my application can make use of the brush, which is actually defined inside of an external file. One other cool thing too, though, let's say that I'm back on my window. And I'm like, OK, I'm using this brush. But you know what? I actually wish I could uh, change it a little bit. Well, as we just saw, when you're inside of a resource dictionary, there is no designer experience for that. So you might think to yourself, oh, crud. Does that mean I have to come over here and manually type out this markup? Well, actually, no. Look at what you can do. Okay, When you're here in the brush editor, so here's the fill. Notice how it's going to show you all your resources in your project right here when I'm over at the brush resource tab. So if you want to change this little guy here, there's a pop-up editor, right? So now, as I'm playing around with this, that's actually updating the markup back in this guy, my external XAML file. So that's kind of handy, right? So don't think that once you put it into a resource, that's it. You can still change it. Just remember that you have to come over here to the brush resources area. And then all your custom ones are going to be right here. All right? So at this point in our little chat, we've uh, looked at a couple of nice things. We talked about working with just the basics of the Blend IDE. We talked about uh, working with complex content. 
took a tour of working with some 2D geometries and transformations and brushes and we just finished up here by talking about some resources. This whole part of the topic or part of the uh, video show here kind of getting us to the point now where we can kind of take it to the next level and we can now use Blend to actually create brand new controls on the fly. Uh, before we get to that part though just want to throw out a little teaser in case you don't know this already. And this is public knowledge here, so no NDA is being broken. Um, Silverlight 3.0, when it releases, it will finally support resource dictionaries, something that we didn't have in 2.0. So if you were to use Blend 3, you would also get the option to build a brand new uh, resource dictionary, which is something that Silverlight programmers have wanted for quite some time. Now, as I mentioned, when we're working with WPF and Silverlight, animations are a lot more subtle than uh, what you might be envisioning. And when you're going to build custom controls, animations are key. Reason is, every single control has something which is called the default template. Right? And this defines within itself the, the default way that a control is going to look and feel and the default visual cues that are going to be used to kind of let the user know what's going on, right? When the user clicks on a button, they assume that the button's going to look indented. If uh, something has input focus, they're going to expect that it has some change of the border, for example. Well, if you make a, a brand new template, all those default visual cues are ripped out of there. So you could create a button that does nothing um, visually when you actually click on it. Right? You're still going to get the click event firing, but there's no visual cue. So whenever you're going to make a custom control, you got to add those back. And the way that we typically account for those visual cues is by using animations. Okay? So we need to look now at this animation editor of Blend. And in the first example, I will kind of do more of a traditional animation where I'm going to have like a moving object on the screen. But just remember, you're going to do the same exact thing when you are trying to incorporate visual cues. So let me go back to good old blend here. Why don't we go ahead and move this shape around? Okay, we've, we've just built something here. Um, we need to now activate the animation editor. So here's the way it's going to work. Right? I'm going to go ahead and select my window. And over here in the objects and timeline area, there's a little teeny plus button that says new. This allows you to make something called a storyboard. Um, a storyboard is sort of a XAML friendly way of calling begin animation through markup. Because remember, XAML is not friendly to function calls, right? XAML is all about properties and event handlers. So I'm going to give this guy a name, move odd shape. Now, as soon as I did that, the objects and timeline area kind of transformed, right? and I see this new part of the editing experience. Well, whenever you're trying to do um, an animation, here's another good key shortcut for you. Hit the F6 key. And that's going to go ahead and put this timeline editor um, along the bottom of your window. Because what you're essentially doing when you're trying to build an animation is you have to go through a series of keyframes over a period of time. right? And <clears throat> with each unit of time, you have to kind of put in some effect. So it's going to be a lot easier to see that when we have this position here. If you hit the F6 key again, it'll just go back to the side. So you can just keep toggling back and forth here. 